Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about WinLink connections and why they can be so difficult when you're just getting started. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So I can't tell you how many times I get an email from an operator that's just getting started with WinLink and they're having a difficult time making a connection. And I'll get emails where they think their radio is uh, set up incorrectly or the Pi is set up incorrectly or a number of other uh, things that they might think is wrong when really there's nothing wrong with their system at all. So I kind of wanted to flesh this out a little bit today and see if I could help uh, some people when they're first getting started with WinLink. So let's think about uh, some other activities for a quick second here. Uh, maybe a parks on the air activation or maybe uh, a summits on the air activation or maybe even just field day. In each of those events, we typically go out and we set up our radio and antenna, uh, maybe the Raspberry Pi, or you could just be using voice, but we start calling CQ. And the whole purpose of those events is to fill the logbook up. We really don't care when we call CQ where the contacts are coming from. It doesn't matter to us if they're 200 miles away or 2,000 miles away. And typically, we don't care about direction. So maybe most of our contacts are coming from the north. Maybe most of them's coming from the east. It really doesn't matter to us as long as we're making contacts uh, and putting those contacts in the log. Now, let's take a look at WinLink. It's a completely different situation. We're doing a peer-to-peer -peer connection with a gateway. So we've got a lot more uh, variables that come into play when we're trying to complete a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Now, one of the first variables that comes into play is what band we're choosing to use when we're trying to make that WinLink connection. Is it 20 meters? Is it 40 meters? Is it 80 meters? Is it something else? Each band is going to act differently than another band. So that can come into play as to which stations you might want to try to connect with first. You're probably not going to have any luck if you try 20 meters with a station that is only uh, a couple of hundred kilometers away from you. You'll probably have better luck on 40 or 80. Now, another thing that comes into play, and guys, uh, let me state right up front here, I typically only use 40 and 80 meters with my WinLink connections. I just seem to have better luck with uh, reliably reproducing uh, a connection time and time again. But let's talk about uh, 40 meters here for a second. 40 meters, depending on what time of day it is, can be long or short. So um, earlier in the mornings and later in the evenings, the band is going to go long, meaning you will need to try to reach a station further away from you than you would in the middle of the day when the band is short. So if you've got a station that's uh, fairly close into you, uh, you'll want to try that maybe on 40 meters closer to around lunchtime or middle of the day to have the best success rate of trying to connect with that gateway. Now, I already touched on this a bit, but distance is something else that comes into play. If the gateway you're trying to uh, connect with is maybe on the other side of the country, you're probably going to have better luck with 20 meters during the daytime. Uh, I definitely wouldn't try 80 meters in the daytime to reach that same station. So those two go hand in hand uh, where we're trying to make a band selection according to what time of day it is. I've got stations on 40 meters that I can hit uh, maybe earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon, but right around uh, the middle of the day, I can't get to those stations at all. 
something else to consider is what is your noise floor? You know, if you've got a S8 or S9 noise floor at your QTH, it's going to be very, very difficult to reach out and make a connection with a gateway. Now, that's not to say that it can't be done, but you're going to have a much more difficult time than if you were in an area where you had an S1 or an S2 noise floor. So it's one other variable that can come into play. Now, I want to talk to you about antennas here for a second. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the whiteboard. Okay, so another critical thing to keep in mind when you're trying to make Winlink connections is the type of antenna you're using. Now, something that you'll never know is, unless you happen to know the gateway owner, is what antenna the gateway is using. And that's another thing that can come into play that can make life difficult. So let's first talk about a vertical antenna. With a vertical antenna, let's put some atmosphere up here. You guys can appreciate my uh, lack of artistic skill here. I apologize. Uh, but with a vertical antenna, we've got what's called a low angle of takeoff, meaning that when the radio waves come off of the antenna, they're traveling at a fairly low angle where they hit the atmosphere and bounce back down. Now, let's contrast that with a NVIS antenna. So with an NVIS antenna, again, we've got our atmosphere up here. With an NVIS antenna, it's going to be horizontal and it's going to be fairly close to the ground. Um, so this is NVIS or Near Vertical Incident Skywave. When the radio waves come off of an NVIS antenna, they're going almost straight up and then straight back down. Now, when I say straight up, straight back down, we're talking a um, radius of about 500, maybe 700 miles, somewhere thereabouts. So how does this come into play when we're talking about making a Winlink connection? Well, let's, let's look at this again for a second. Let's draw our atmosphere back up here. And we're going to assume this is my station here, and I'm running an NVIS horizontal antenna. And we've got the gateway over here, and he's running a vertical antenna. And let's assume that there's roughly 200 miles between us, okay? I send my signal up, and it's going to radiate back down to a point that the gateway can hear me because we're inside that 500 mile circle here. Oh, and I didn't mention, but let's assume we're using 40 meters closer to the middle of the day. Okay, now he hears our signal and he responds. However, when he responds, because he's running a vertical antenna, he's got that low angle of takeoff again. So he comes up here and hits the horizon somewhere, by the time his signal comes back down, it's completely missed me. I'm inside of what's called his skip zone. And because of that, even though he can hear me, I may not be able to hear, hear his return. So that can provide a lot of uh, aggravation when you're first trying to learn to make Winlink connections. So let's get rid of this again. Now, this time, let's say that we happen to uh, be, this is my station over here, and we've got a gateway here, and again, 200 miles between us. If he is also running that NVIS antenna, and I'm running an NVIS antenna, and the time of day is correct, then we're probably going to have a pretty good success rate of reaching this station. Now, let's change, uh, let's change this up a little bit. Let's assume now that this is 2,000 miles apart. Again, we're on 40 meters and roughly in the middle of the day, both still running in, in VIS antenna. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Chances are 
will never hear one another because an NVIS antenna is designed to communicate close in with you. So if you send this signal straight up and straight back down, remember we've got about a 500, maybe 700 mile circle here that we're going to radiate our, uh, ra our uh, and radio waves in. Because of that, this station never hears us. Now, one last thing that comes into play is just band conditions. Guys, we're still at a low point in the uh, solar cycle, and some days the bands just won't cooperate with us. Uh, I know I'll run into a day here and there that even stations that I can get into on a pretty routine basis, I'm just not able to hit on that particular day. Maybe we're having uh, one of the geomagnetic storms or whatever, but for some reason, some days, the bands just don't cooperate with us. So, what do I recommend? Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. And what you'll learn, it, it is frustrating, especially uh, when you're starting out and trying to figure this out. But what you'll learn over time, if you keep good notes, you'll start to figure out which stations you can hit using which bands at which time of the day and which antenna you're using. Uh, but I hope this gives you an idea of where to start and maybe uh, helps you make that first connection. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.